So we're going to make the uh, jump to genomic speed here and leave reproductive biology behind us. Our next speaker is the missing variation revealed by deep sequencing of individuals in a population of Drosophila simulans, and that would be Sarah Signer. Hi. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak for you today and also for all of you um, for sticking around so late. I know you must all be as tired as I am. So um, <laughs> there will be no phenotypes in this talk. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you guys about some work I've been doing in Drosophila simulans as a postdoc in the lab of Sergei Neustin. So um, the standard model of population genetics is that adaptation is mutation limited. So populations are waiting for these beneficial mutations to occur, and when they do, they move rapidly to fixation in the population. And if you were to go and sample from that population, it would be very unlikely that you would actually catch one of these beneficial mutations during its sojourn to fixation. And one of the ideas behind this model, too, is that deleterious mutations are maintained in the population through mutation selection balance, and that when we look at quantitative traits and see variation in them, it's just the result of deleterious mutations still sorting in the population that have not been selected out. However, um, other fields have made observations that seem to bring this model into question. So when we measure a heritable variation in populations, um, there is more than can be explained by just mutation selection balance. Also, when people work on phenotypic evolution, they often find that adaptation is very rapid, much rap more rapid than you would expect if, if adaptation is mutation limited. Um, there's also just some evidence that populations are not mutation limited, where you see multiple beneficial mutations accumulate on a single haplotype before it goes to fixation, um, such as in insecticide resistance. So along with all of this excess variation that we seem to find, um, there's also sort of this expectation that in large or very polymorphic populations, meaning high mutation rate, um, beneficial mutations might not go to fixation. Um, and indeed, in many laboratory experiments, that's what they see. Um, beneficial mutations often do not fix. So in that case, um, if you are seeing you know, large populations with a lot of variation, a lot of mutational input, this classic model of a hard sweep might actually be really rare. Um, and there's a lot of evidence out there for the importance of soft sweeps. Um, and more all the time. Um, so there's evidence from Drosophila, bacteria, rabbits, C. elegans. Um, and soft or incomplete sweeps would also maintain more variation in populations than hard sweeps. So we wanted to know if you know, we went out and sampled from a large population, um, if, there, if we would find more variation than we expected and if this variation did seem to be impacted by soft or incomplete sweeps. Um, so we collected 170 isofemale lines of Drosophila simulans and inbred them for 15 generations, and they were collected from the Zuma Organic Orchard in Southern California, where there aren't going to be, um, for example, seasonal population crashes. The weather is pretty stable, the population is stable. So we called SNPs with the, the GATK pipeline um, using standard data filtering, um, including rem removing any individuals that had any probability of um, identity by descent genome-wide, um, looking at only by allelic loci, uh, filtering for quality. And what we found was really unexpected. Um, so we found, uh, so in this picture, um, we've got pi and theta on the um, left-hand axis, and Tajima's D on the right-hand axis. Tajima's D is in pink, and the line, the, the pink line going across the graph is at zero for Tajima's D. So we see values of pi that are consistent with other studies. So there is no you know, reduction in variability in this population overall. Um, However, we see these pervasive positive values of Tajima's D in, normals, in regions of normal recombination. So if we use the most stringent 
um, cutoff for Tajima's D, five to two, 10 percent of the windows are significant. But overall, we've just got this ele really elevated Tajima's D across all of the regions of normal recombination. So we were really surprised by this result. And so we wanted to do some sensitivity analysis to see that it was robust. So we used different quality filters. We filtered for different levels of inbreeding. And we also uh, looked at the effect of masking or not masking heterozygous bases because there is still residual heterozygosity in this panel. We also looked at whether there was a relationship between the quality of variant calls and heterozygosity. And we used um, several different computational methods to calculate Tajima's D and several SNP calling methods to calculate SNPs. Our results were robust to all of these different variations. So it really does not seem like this is some kind of methodological artifact. So there are a couple of potential explanations for this. There could be demo demographic explanations, like population contraction, or there could be um, admixture. And there could be biological explanations, like balancing selection, or incomplete or soft selective sweeps. So uh, in, in the case of population contraction, you would expect that um, there, would be, there wouldn't be differences between regions of low and high recombination, and you can see that there are really large differences. Um, and our estimates of polymorphism are also consistent with previous estimates. In the case of admixture, you would expect that the admixed regions would be in co-inherited, so you would have long-range linkage disequilibrium, and we don't see that. So this is just an example, um, but on average, linkage decays within 200 base pairs, which is the same as pretty much any other study. Um, also, a principal components analysis uh, shows no evidence of admixture. So if, if it was an admixed population, you would expect to see like a tail in the PCA, which we don't see. So if it was balancing selection, then the alleles would have a deeper phylogenetic history and more time to recombine. So the expectation would be that there's a negative relationship between Tazima's D and linkage disequilibrium. So in regions of negative Tajima's D, we see higher linkage disequilibrium, which makes sense, and those um, points are mostly from regions of restricted combination. However, in the case of balancing selection, you would almost expect that blue line to just continue, um, and that's not what we see. Um, in regions of positive Tajima's D, there's a positive slope of linkage disequilibrium, which is not consistent with expectations under balancing selection. So, there's obviously all of this excess variation that doesn't seem to be being maintained by um, demography or balancing selection. And so soft sweeps don't require elevated Tajima's D, but they are consistent with them. And so we wanted to see if this variation was maybe being affected by soft or incomplete sweeps. So we looked at a haplotype um, homozygosity statistic, H12, which basically looks at the frequency of the two most frequent haplotypes um, to see if there's evidence for a soft sweep. Um, and what that looks like is this. So um, the H12 looks at the frequency, like I said, of the two most frequent haplotypes. And then if you look at H2 over H1, what you're com doing is comparing the frequency of the second haplotype to the first to try and see how soft the sweep is. So the higher the value of H2 over H1, the softer the sweep. So shown here are the haplotype um, frequency for 2L. Um, and so the two most frequent haplotypes are shown in uh, light blue and blue. And then we've got um, H12 peaks across the chromosome of 2L. And I'd like to point out that the first column shown here on the haplotype um, is, uh, corresponds to that large, very large peak that's right by the centromere of 2L. And that's also the H2 over H1 indicates that that is a hard sweep, which is consistent with Tajima's D and with it being in a lower region of recombination. So, um, and this analysis also uh, confirmed several like positive controls, like we found CYP6G1 in a peak, we found ACE in a peak, um, and CHCOV1, which have all been identified before for um, various uh, hard and soft sweeps. So we wanted to look at the density of soft sweeps. Um, so you know, we can see that they're there, but um, how prevalent are they? So what we did was we took our top H12 values, which could be hard or soft. Um, so that's the top 25% shown in black. 
and we graphed the density of H2 over H1 values within the top 25% uh, of the H1-2 values. So for example, on the X chromosome, uh, there's a peak near the origin, which indicates that among the high H1-2 scores, it's actually hard sweeps that appear to be more common. However, on 3R, for example, you can see a peak at the middle values, indicating that soft sweeps are more, are more prevalent. And overall, it just appears that the sweeps do not have a hard edge. Sweeps of varying softness seem to dominate in the high H12 values. So this is, while other studies have found plenty of evidence for um, soft selective sweeps, the elevated to genus D um, is a somewhat unique result. Um, and it might be because Tajima's D is very sensitive to sampling depth. So um, you generally shouldn't look at Tajima's D unless you have um, more than 50 samples from one population, or at least that's what some simulations have seemed to show. Um, but there was the global diversity lines um, by Grenier et al. in 2015. Those did have a positive Tajima's D, although not as positive as ours. Um, it's also possible that this is somehow related to sampling, um, because sampling sparsely from several populations could create the illusion of low frequency variants. So for example, the DGRP was collected at a farmer's market and likely represents um, many different populations. It's also possible that there is some kind of complex demographic scenarios. However, Drosophila simulans is known to have a very large effective population size. So the message is that in large populations, many beneficial mutations may segregate, and that soft sweeps seem to dominate and maintain variation. Um, and our hypothesis is that this could be due to multiple beneficial mutations um, for a single trait sorting in the population, uh, polygenic selection, or context-specific fitness. Um, so temporally or spatially varying fitness, or just selection coefficients that change depending upon um, background or uh, time. So in conclusion, uh, it could be that there is no conflict between the standard models of population genetics that are mutation limited and quantitative genetics that seems to find this abundant heritable variation, but we need additional population genetic theory that um, addresses maybe these cases of uh, large populations and high diversity. So with that, I would like to thank my collaborators, uh, Sergei Nuzhin, Lauren McIntyre, and Felicia New, and my funding sources, USC and NIH. Um, and they're not up here, but I'd also like to thank uh, Dmitry Petrov and Nandita Garud for help with the haplotype analysis. And with that, I'll take your questions. Thank you. Good. All right. Sorry. 